scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want to truly, truly appreciate our Father, um, Pastor Ben. Thank you so much, sir, and our mother, and the entire organizing committee. I count it an honor and a privilege to be here to speak even at this Kingdom Summit. I, you know, I went through the, the bill and I saw that I was just commenting Pastor Ben and it's an incredible collection of people. I can imagine the kinds of ideas. Let it plant in me afresh the spirit of faith, confidence to face the future. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh, one more time. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you speak to us. With power, grant us access to wisdom, position us to manifest victory, even in these uncertain times. And to you be all the praise, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please be gloriously seated. Amen and amen and amen. So we'll start with three very profound scriptures. Three scriptures that I believe speak to the reality of our time today first chronicles 12 32 first chronicles 12 32 please um, help us media thank you the bible says and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times to know what israel ought to do this was the intent of their understanding to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. So there was a tribe, the Bible calls it the tribe of Issachar, that they had the unique advantage of understanding the times and then to know what to do in light of the times. Scripture number two. It's a long read, I plead for your patience. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we'll read the first eight verses. I hope you join me when I ask you to. Let me start, and then somewhere along the line you'll join me. To everything, say everything. One more time, say everything. To everything, he says, there is a season. This is good news. To everything, including every pain, including every disappointment, including every economic situation provided it falls under the description everything my bible says there is a season 
that means nothing aside from God is eternal. Are we together now? This should already give you hope. I heard about a story, let me just digress for a minute, that there was a king who wanted a sentence that would apply for every situation. And so he called together his wise men and all who made his cabinet of wisdom and gave them an instruction that they should go and look for one sentence that applies to every situation. And the people said, what kind of a king is this now? What would have led to this kind of trouble? And you know, in those days, if you failed or defaulted at the king's command, the penalty was death immediately. And so these guys went together and they brainstormed. They would put certain sentences, but it would make sense in certain situations. Then they came up with a sentence. And then they said, oh, king, we are ready to hear you. And they said, brilliant. So let me hear what sentence you've come up with. And here was their answer. These two shall pass away. That was the sentence they found, and they said it applied to every and any situation. These two shall pass away. So this is what the Bible is saying. To everything, it says, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. So, gives us a sample of the many events upon the earth. It says, a time to be born. And a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted verse 3 a time to kill and a time to happen and for the last as much as history has captured it has not failed if there is summer there must be winter now sometimes some periods may look longer than others for various reasons that science is still trying to unravel hallelujah once upon a time where i come from once it was probably august september that would be the end of the rainy season as we know in nigeria but very strangely yesterday or was it day before there was such a heavy downpour who knows perhaps we might get rain during december but it does not change the fact that seed time and harvest cold and winter are we together now Yes, this is very profound. So, the first thing we know and we learn from this scripture is that all activities under the sun are regulated by times and seasons. This is something that you need to have at the back of your mind, even in dealing with the subject of uncertainty, that all activities under the sun, by divine injunction, have been mandated to submit to the law of times and seasons what is a season a season is a time period when certain and almost predictable occurrences happen so when you call a time period a season it is a moment in time where certain activities almost predictable where they occur we call them seasons and um with respect to these there are two kinds of seasons there are what i call predictable seasons and unpredictable seasons for instance when a woman is with child you can predict that she's in a season and almost with with, with precision and accuracy, you know that after nine months under normal circumstances, she should be with child. Am I right on that? Yes. So there are seasons when you send a student to school, you can predict the period and maybe, maybe with a year plus or minus depending on the situation, but you can fairly predict. But there are certain unpredictable seasons. For instance, the sudden loss of a loved one for instance the sudden loss of your job for uh, and they don't have to be evil for instance a sudden miraculous manifestation things that you did not even expect hallelujah are we learning already so the bible tells us that to everything under the sun there is a season now i want to refer you to a very interesting scripture um, I have studied the subject of seasons myself and I have been profoundly blessed by the wisdom that the Word of God gives concerning seasons and the recommendations in fact I don't know how long 
uh, I have to deal with this. But let's go to Genesis chapter 41. I want to show you something about discerning seasons and how to build up. I want to recommend by the scripture a very formidable formula for thriving and surviving through any and all kinds of seasons. Now, there are people that when you look at their lives, it looks so flawless and invincible. It's not because they do not experience these, the good or the bad, is that they have been able to draw out a strategy from scripture that has given them the grace to thrive regardless of the season. And this is what I seek by grace to hand over to you tonight. You're ready to receive, say amen. amen. So the Bible tells us in this interesting story that Pharaoh, Pharaoh, um, was a king in Egypt. It's called a Pharaoh. So Pharaoh goes to sleep and then he is given two mysterious dreams. Hallelujah. He got up from that dream with a very, very disturbing countenance, the Bible would tell us. And he called on to his wise men, the astrologers. It was customary for kings to surround themselves with diviners and people who had an advantage beyond the three-dimensional realm so that they would help to advise them concerning matters of war, concerning matters of economy, and so on and so forth. So in this case, he called together his wise men, and he said, listen, I've had a dream, and if you, I need someone to interpret this dream for me. And then he tells them the dream, and strangely, none of them had a clue as to what that dream meant. Are we together? Then the wine press, according to scripture, I'm just fast forwarding the, the, the rendition so that we'll save time. So he goes to pick up this young boy. He said, I remember my wrong this day. Oh, king, once upon a time when you were angry, you took me to the prison and I met this young gentleman. And he interpreted my dream and it happened exactly as he said. And the Bible says the king sent for Joseph. They brought him out of his dungeon. Now Joseph is standing before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh recites the dream again. Hallelujah. That should be verse, what verse now? It's a long read, the entire story. You find that um, um, quite a long read, almost 1 to 57 really, but just walk with me as I just narrate the story. So Joseph is standing before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh tells him, here is my dream. And Pharaoh said, Joseph says, no problem, go ahead, tell me the dream. God will give the Pharaoh an interpretation of peace. Then he begins his narration. I was standing, he says, by the river bank, and I saw these seven fat, well-fed cows. Are we together now? And then there out of the river came seven ill-fed, you know, very poor-looking cows, and they came and ate the ones that were fat. And that was the end of it. Another kind of the dream, he said, I also saw seven ears of corn, you know, or plants, well-nourished, you know, fruitful, very attractive. And then on the other hand, I saw these ones that were pale, sickly, almost looking dead, and they came and consumed these ones. And he said, this is my dream. And Joseph said, oh, I see. Pharaoh, what you saw has nothing to do with animals. What you saw has nothing to do with plants. What you saw has nothing to do with one animal eating another. What you saw was a prophetic message that is consistent with the occurrence in the earth. What you saw was a revelation of seasons. Hallelujah. That what you saw was consistent with God's design and God's proclamation on the earth. Now he interprets the dream by saying, the seven cows or the seven plants represent seven years of plenty. Are we still together now? Years of abundance, years of opportunity, followed by seven years of drought and famine so grievous as the world had not seen. And this brought Pharaoh to a point of scare. What is the meaning of this? And he said, find rest. You have seen it twice, meaning there is no amount of prayer that you pray that will take it away. It is established. God designed the earth to happen that way. Rather than crying and regretting and hoping the seasons will change, let me give you a strategy 
that helps you to survive through all of the seasons. Is someone learning now? Yes. You would think that Joseph would say, all right, you know what? Let's cancel the other season so that there will be 14 cows, well-nourished cows. Let's pray and cancel the season so that there will be 14 ears of corn. But he said, Pharaoh, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but what you have seen twice is because the matter is established. It cannot be changed. It is an ordinance. Rather than regretting over the oscillations of seasons, let me deliver to you by the wisdom of the Spirit a strategy that can make your seven years of plenty and your seven years of drought look like they But the first beneficiary of that revelation was Joseph himself. Hmm. A man who had been in prison for X number of years, plus two years added because of the carelessness of someone who forgot to talk to the king on his behalf. Can you imagine that? His ability to remain joyful and remain motivated whilst in prison. From the pit betrayed by his brother to Potiphar's house, as though some ray of hope were coming and then the tragedy with Potiphar's wife lands him in prison. We don't know how long he stayed there. Interprets the dream of the baker and the wine presser and pleads that please, when you get to the king, now that you have his ears, can you advocate my evil sense? And then the guy went there and forgot. Does that sound like what people can do? They forget. They don't just forget God, they forget men including you but in the name of jesus christ may the book of remembrance be opened shout a loud amen may the book of remembrance be opened that's what happened between ahasuerus and mordecai once upon a time a group of people conspired to kill him he would have been long dead and the story of Esther would not even be there. But a man called Mordecai, serving the king at the gate, he heard of the conspiracy and he reported it. And by so doing, the life of the king was preserved. His good work was archived, but he was never rewarded. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that night could not King Ahasuerus sleep. He said, bring me the chronicles. When he opened it, it was found there where Mordecai saved his life and said, what has been done to such a man? And unfortunately, it was Haman. He used his evil-heartedness to design such a reward system, thinking it would be him. And the king said, let none of this fail. Do this, even for Mordecai. Let's go back to our text. So Pharaoh is standing, Joseph is standing before Pharaoh, and he's revealing something very profound that you don't pray seasons away. You build a spiritual system through understanding that helps you to rise. You can have dominion over seasons. But as to the alternating nature of seasons, hallelujah now. In Nigeria and those of you who are following from across the globe, permit my bias, let me work with the seasons that we have here for our understanding. We have what we call rainy season and dry season, and that's all. That's all we have and know here in Nigeria. Are we together? And so we have the rainy season, usually the first half or seven or eight months, and then the remaining part is we know as a dry season. But did you know that sometimes when you see the dry season in Nigeria, you will never imagine it ever rain once leaves everything dust sometimes you're frustrated and you so look forward to the first rain and then when your car is navigating through all kinds of um, you know waters because of the rain you are now wondering when in the world will the dry season come so that we rest from this this drench that i've received now hear me please every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season i am coming and every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. The key to maximizing seasons is not just to enjoy them, but to read the letters they bring. Every season comes with a letter from the other season coming. That means when you see seven years of plenty, and I'll construct my ideas shortly, it comes with a letter that there is another kind of season coming. The solution and the strategy is found in Joseph's recommendation. 
and I'm summarizing this because I want to dwell a bit there. Is someone learning already? Now, most believers, because we lack spiritual intelligence, um, we feel that the faith life just gives us immunity to negate certain seasons. And we hope that our years will be full of seven healthy cows turning to 14, turning to multiply seven until your entire lifetime. Unfortunately, even Jesus had to go through these alternating seasons. Once upon a time, they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The next moment, they are saying, crucify him and let his blood come upon our heads. Once upon a time, the disciples are saying, to whom shall we go? And the next moment, the random cows will give way. And he said, it is established, it will not change. Our world is full of people today who mismanage seasons because they did not understand this. Are we together? There are many people who stepped into Kairos seasons. And I'll be explaining to you shortly what these seasons are and the advantages that they bring and how the believers should position themselves. There are people today in this nation with all due respect and across the globe who should have no business begging for bread, not with the kind of doors God once opened. But they did not know that the reality of seasons befall all men. And they were wrapped up in that opportunity, some politicians, some business persons are together, some of them, even ministers of the gospel. How about people who were once children and now they are counting 70 something, 80 something, 90 something, say seasons. Hmm. The young baby who was once in a manger now was a 30 year old gentleman about to start ministry. Three and a half years later, exalted as Savior. Are we together now? Yes. If you do not understand the reality of seasons, you will live a very defeated Christian life. Now, the seven years of plenty represents moments of number one, ease. Number two, opportunities. Please write. The seven years of plenty represents moments of opportunity moments of ease moments where life goes on as expected moments of abundance seven years of plenty they represent again i say moments of opportunity moments of ease moments where life goes on as expected moments of abundance you will always according to the law of time and chance no matter how disadvantaged you are provided you are dwelling under the earth there will be a time when light will shine upon you now sometimes you can be wrapped up with your pain that you do not see these moments when they come hallelujah everybody according to the law of time and chance born again or otherwise that according to the wisdom of God and the law of seasons, there will always be a moment when you are positioned in a location, positioned in a phase where life should not know how to handle these seasons. And then we begin to say things like you don't have faith or your faith is not working. There are certain things that have been, they have already been so constructed. It is the law of seasons. It will not change. Are we following? So, the seven years of plenty represent years of ease, moments where life is just happening for you the way you want. A graduate before you are done with NYSC, here comes two beautiful jobs in choice companies. And so you have a very legitimate reason to dance in church, a legitimate reason to jump in church. I mean, in two years you are already earning millions. Who would not like such a life? Wonderful. Then one day something happens. The first introduction to the other side of seasons. Someone hates you for no reason in your place of work and says, under my watch, you must leave this place. And now the more you pray, they promote the person. And you are saying, Lord, I thought everything should just work. Are you not the God of all power? Now that I'm praying, get this guy out of the way to keep the trajectory of my life going as designed. It is important to see stability in life 
happens when you learn to taste of these seasons. There is an orientation about God and life that you have. There is a balance you have when you are exposed to both seasons. In fact, many great leaders, globally speaking and even in the faith work, they want the kinds of people who have tasted of these seasons to be able to trust them with positions of authority. A man who does not know what failure looks like is a risk, no matter how successful he is. There is a bias that that balance gives you. It helps you to appreciate life, to honor men, to respect seasons, and to see every passing day that gives you an opportunity to rejoice as a day to rejoice indeed. Because all days may not be like that. Mm. Hallelujah. Church is quiet. I believe the Holy Ghost is speaking to our hearts and perhaps for someone waking you up. Let's talk about the seven years of famine. What do they mean based on Joseph's dream? Seven years of famine refer to moments of inconvenience. Please write. Moments of constraint. Moments of disappointment. Moments of insufficiency. Again, seven years of famine refer to moments of inconvenience, moments of constraint, moments of disappointment, moments perhaps of insufficiency. This was your dream, O Pharaoh. You saw seven years of abundance, seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of a harsh economic climate that would come upon the entire globe, not just Egypt. Now, I wrote something down here and I want you to please listen. Everyone on earth will have to experience these seasons repeatedly for as long as you live. Everyone on earth for as long as you live these seasons will befall you. What you make out of them or what they make out of you depends now on your faith and your understanding about God. Are we together now? Yes. Because my Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I fear no evil. But as far as the valley of the shadow of death is concerned, it will come. There are times you are taken out of it. There are times God comes into it to meet you there. Is someone, someone learning now? This, this is very, very important. important. Now, now let's, let's go, go to Joseph's interpretation and suggestion, his recommendation. Genesis, Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Please give me from verse, um, let's try 49. Genesis 41. Oh dear. He's, He's already interpreted, interpreted that. Find me. I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to cut. It was supposed to be a long reading, almost 50 verses. We may not have that time. Find for me where he begins to interpret the dream and tells the king his recommendation to look for a man discreet and wise. Please, media, find that scripture for me and then we'll take it from there. I want to now show you by the spirit of the living God a, a Bible blaze. I think, I think that, that should be anything, anything from 25, 25 about 24, 25. 25. Please, Please give it to us. 24, 25. Genesis, Genesis 41. 41. Yeah. yeah. And yes, yes the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none. Okay, okay 25. 25. Let's, Let's take it from there. there. Are you patient, patient enough to allow me to read? Yeah. All right, so. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God had showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. 26 now. The seven good kind are seven years. You see that now? And the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. Next verse. The seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. 
Next verse, please. Behold, there are come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt, uh -huh, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Watch this now. Now, therefore, let me have your attention now. He's done with his interpretation. He's about to recommend a strategy to survive very uncertain times. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out for a man a polite, polite way of saying, I dare you to check if you find such a man as me. Remember, Remember this, this guy, guy just came out of prison. prison. It's, it's not safe to be harsh and return back there. He says, now therefore, let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to take up a fifth part, 20%. Of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come. Pay attention now and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the years. Is someone learning now of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt? That the land perish not through the famine. Profound revelation. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed you these things, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word, my goodness, Joseph did not know he would be the first beneficiary of this. This guy had lived such a long time, he did not know that while he was in the prison the day before, it was one day left for the season to change. Like someone who came here now, you've been crying, and you don't know that you are just a few hours left. You see, the assignment of the prophetic is to midwife you from one season to the other. Do you believe this? Imagine if you were the last person to shake Joseph's hand as a prisoner. Be careful what you do to men. You do not know the transitions that are happening in their lives. Are we together now? There are many, many past presidents and heads of state in this nation who were once in prison years ago when i taught on the law of seasons i thought that imagine if you had the opportunity to shake the hands of one of them you did not know you were shaking the president and you shouted at him my food please and then now he becomes a president and remembers you may you never be remembered for evil say men again Because of your attitude in relation to seasons, your life and your name can become a padlock or it can become a key. You can literally use your life and your poor understanding of seasons to lock up not just your destiny but the destiny of all who come after you. There are names today people have to change those names to survive. Because if you are ever associated with those names, they bring back memories. Memories that have nothing to do with you, but you will be punished for another man's sins. Yet there are other names that, that, that are expressions of redemption. That when a man is in a pit, you see, it's not just the name of Jesus that should be powerful. Like him, at the end of your life, or when you've made sufficient, you know, work in life, something should come upon your name. That, that people can, can use your name as a leverage to rise. This, this is already a call for someone. There, there are many young people, people right now designing a very terrible life, wasting seasons, seasons and, and their names are becoming a padlock, and unfortunately, the recipients of this tragedy will be their children. 
What surname did you mention? I remember in 1991. Was that not the person who caused pain for 10 years? I'm sorry you cannot get the job. But I first, I'm sorry you cannot get the job. Not under that name. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Anyone carrying any negative name that has caused you problems, they may not tell you why, but you have been associated with families and regions that may have come with certain tragedies. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the God who shows mercy and the God who shows favor visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Is God speaking to someone? So now, here's the summary of Joseph's recommendation. Knowing that every season of ease, opportunity, where life is a straight line with you, will not last forever. He says, every time you are in your seven years of plenty, number one, start preparing. Hallelujah. Start preparing no matter how confident you are about the current season you don't prepare out of fear you prepare out of a sense of responsibility because inevitably seasons will change you don't have to change but the seasons will change hallelujah are we together now yeah so while you are in your seven years of plenty you are a celebrity everybody is celebrating you with all due respect and you know with every sense of of regard there are many people sports people once upon a time they were in their seven years of plenty earning hundreds of thousands of pounds and dollars every week and they forgot that one day they will grow old to pass the age requirement they enjoyed the glitz and glamour people celebrated them and unfortunately some of those people are in a sorry state today they ignored the advice and the counsel of Joseph. There are people who had the opportunity to work, probably multinationals that gave them an opportunity. They spent time wasting those seasons and they did not know that seasons change. There are many people today who had the opportunity to build a good relationship with their parents and they ignored it. and regret because they wasted opportunities not knowing that every day counts hallelujah they had opportunity perhaps to make a maximum impact in a life and they kept postponing it many years ago um, i don't watch so much of films and movies doesn't matter who is acting it is just sometimes i don't have the time and the interest i will even sleep once i start uh, and I would think about something else and just sleep off. Are we together? But I remember watching a movie. I don't even know the name. Don't can't remember. I don't know the names of those who acted it. I just know that there was a message. I want to draw a line from that movie. Someone who had money or so and didn't bless his parents or his family until they died. And then he was trying to organize an elaborate funeral. I don't know the name, but I'm, I'm sure some of you are already smiling now. There is something in our walk in life called too late. Timing. Timing is of essence. You want to be kind, there is a time for it. You want to give, there is a time for it. You want to invest in the life of your children, there is a time for it. Most people are very careless about life, very passive let us fair they don't care they believe every time is just there i have once i'm alive no sir no sir no matter how great a footballer you are once you cross the age requirement you will only play at home as a hobby but you may not be rewarded for having that skill because you have gone past the time hallelujah knowledge no knowledge is a waste but ladies and gentlemen imagine a man of 65 years in primary school because he's motivated and he wants to still be educated most likely he'll be sleeping during lecture and he's not wrong based on the law of seasons he should be sleeping truly 
except that not in class are we learning now yes so don't get into that flattery and that deception to waste your life and believe that every moment is convenient for everything when you buy a product there's something that is written under best before best before means you want to maximize this product consume within this time range that after this time range you are not guaranteed the kind of quality you are looking for and it can even deteriorate to a point that it will hurt your health every activity in life has a best before and unfortunately there are many people who have not sustained the intelligence to see it this is why god left us his mercy because someone in this place tonight whilst you are hearing me speak the lord will be speaking to you if you had paid attention 10 years ago you would have become that man of god by now you had the opportunity to have come out for the altar call 10 years ago but you said one day i'll think about it and the destinies that were connected based on god's calendar for your life the 10 years was the time allocated for your growth and stature you should have discovered destiny by now your life would have been blessing the nations but you just got born again now and it takes time to know god do you know every time you abort destiny you are not the only person who suffers because there are many people connected to your destiny and connected to your wise use of seasons hallelujah the prisons are full of people today who had these seven years of plenty and had seven years some of them wasted their opportunity some of them had the leverage of wealthy parents they didn't have to start from ground zero they wasted their opportunity while they watched their contemporaries walking their way to a successful a disciplined and responsible life how about those who were born by Christian families, already had that leverage of a spiritual inheritance, and yet they did not take God serious. Now the man is 50 or 60 years. With all kinds of children, he did not invest to train. Now he's getting born again at that point, and he needs to go through the pain. He does not even have that energy to endure again. Jesus, when he came, guess what he said? I must walk the works of him that sent me. Help me. While it is day. This is Jesus speaking. He said, for the night, even for Jesus, for the night cometh when no man can walk again. For the night cometh. There are people today who had the opportunity with all due respect to be multi-millionaires. Some of the people who are billionaires around this nation were their colleagues when they started investing and they shared the ideas with them. They were enjoying tomorrow and they ate tomorrow's bread on, in their today and now they are hungry. And there are many young people who have insulted their parents and are reprogramming the same tragedy now. You see that now? Are we together now? Understanding times and seasons. So I want to give you, as we wrap up, five biblical recommendations on how to maximize your seven years of plenty. And then I will wrap up by telling you what to do when you get into seasons of pain, of constraint please pray in the spirit in one minute i know that you've heard a lot of discussions but pray this your destiny depends the quality of your destiny depends on the truth of god's word even that which you'll be hearing please pray some of you you need to pray i've made mistakes i've wasted certain seasons now i'm in a season of pain as a result of the seeds that I've sown, Lord, open my eyes to see. Let me not repeat this mistake that I made again. You have given me another chance. Let me maximize it. Is someone praying? Hallelujah. Now, Please lend me your attention. Write this down, please, if you're writing. The believer in Christ, the believer in Christ has the advantage of remaining victorious regardless what season comes. This is the good news. The believer in Christ has the advantage 
of remaining victorious regardless what season comes i repeat one more time the believer in christ has the advantage of remaining victorious regardless which season comes second corinthians 2 14 please second corinthians 2 14 my goodness someone's life is about to change now thanks be unto god which always did you see always there regardless the awareness that there are alternating seasons always can be your portion it says always causes us to triumph in christ and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us that you can see a man regardless of alternating seasons you are still on top rising making impact and when others are saying don't worry seasons will catch up with you you will go down you say no they will come but i found a formula i have paid attention to what joseph told pharaoh hmm. is someone learning thanks be to god which always whether in my seven years of abundance or seven years of famine egypt survived because a strategy was given now we live in uncertain times i know that economically things are down i know that politically you see the unrest across the globe but let me tell you the truth herein lies the advantage of being one with christ it is at these moments of darkness you see the excellency of something called the wisdom of the just there is an advantage we have our advantage is not just when we get to heaven the ability to be indomitable unperturbed by life's vicissitudes you have outsourced an intelligence when there was a storm coming the storm was going to come no one could not pray the storm coming but a strategy was given to him he said listen noah if you listen to me whatever was in the middle you see that now and the Bible says those men languished, they cried. You could imagine someone with his children and the innocent children who did not have an opportunity to make choices. They now became the victims of the wickedness of one man and they all drowned. Yet, in the entire earth, there are moments in time where whether you are a businessman, whether you are a man of God, it is not vocation sensitive. There are events on earth that only use your survival is based on your connection with God. If you were in the days of Noah, whether you were an engineer, whether you were an architect, whether you were educated, whether you had a skyscraper, whether you lived in Dubai or you lived in Nigeria, third world or first world, the flood will sweep everything. And can I tell you, it has never stopped. Read through history, not just in the Bible. There are always moments in time where events happen on earth that affects everybody. At that point, thank God for skill, and I'm not against it. But your real fortification at such point becomes the name of the Lord. That is a strong tower. The Bible does not just say the righteous call it. They run into it like that ark of Noah, and they are saved. hallelujah your strength your capacity is small you will not always have the time to pray as long as you want there are many people now you have the advantage of time because your loved ones are still taking care of you and sending you support use the five hours to pray now make investments that will speak in the life of your children and your children's children most people who are being mightily used by god today they had the advantage of knowing god and investing spiritually early the bible tells us everybody is a farmer but that you can sow to the flesh and of the flesh reap corruption or sow to the spirit and of the spirit reap life everlasting every day when you wake up the one hour prayer the two hour prayer the, the sermons you are listening to re-engineering your spiritual understanding you are fulfilling the recommendation of joseph because a day will come you may not have the strength again now that you do not have five children four children yet as a woman you have the you can go on a retreat Rather than sitting down and shouting and saying, when will a husband come? Don't waste those times. You will miss those moments. Now that you can go on a retreat without anybody giving you permission, 
go and roll on the four horns of the altar and say lord every child that comes out of this womb they will not be armed robbers they will not be destroyers of destinies they will be builders you are making preparation for those days hallelujah apostle but i have no job i've been praying that god gives me a job do you know that when you have your job maybe the job will even make you work on sunday after service you will now say sir i want to rest they say no the nature of this job will allow you to go to church immediately after service with your bible you are going to the office are we together and so god says listen to teachings you will not die with all due respect parents can i encourage you challenge your children don't say they are too small if they have if they know the difference between good and evil don't let evil sweep them let them pray while you are praying let them pray let them fast challenge them they can fast and stop by 12 they will not die hallelujah this is how champions emerge nobody suddenly arrives you're a young man and you know that god has told you the mantle of a savior is upon you you cannot live your life carelessly and just want it seasons will change whether you are prepared or not hallelujah now that you have the opportunity to be connected to the king's court you may not have the financial resources now to travel and meet all the speakers they they will not even listen to you so god has given you the leverage of influence and they have brought them to you yet there are people who want to be spoon fed by life and destiny unfortunately is the reason why they do not rise tonight's teaching is supposed to shake you this is my session so my apologies i will i will apologize when we share the grace but for now let this drum into your spirit for some of you it's the spirit of god speaking through me while you think nobody can talk to you time is going unfortunately it does not respect you taking taking i was teaching a group of people in south africa and i told them every time you celebrate your birthday don't celebrate how old you are you are celebrating what is left if you are 30 years you are not 30 years you are x years minus 30. that's what you have left you can't do anything about the 30 years that has passed and only God knows what that X is. So now that there is another side to life, you must build capacity. Build capacity. When Satan struck at Jesus, he said, it is written. He didn't learn that it is written on that day. He learned it from age 12. For 18 years, he was building capacity. 18 years. 18 years. Hallelujah. I remember many years ago, as a man of God, we were preparing for miracle service one of my precious ladies i loved the lady so much and a leader in fact she traveled and went to um i think her her brother her brother's wife um gave birth and she quickly ran to just go and celebrate with them and return i was even counseling when they called me and they said look are you alone we need to talk to you i said what is it talk to me and they said um this lady just had an accident and of course they are still trying to play around with the family to do a soft landing but the truth is that she's dead she's gone you are preparing for a miracle service as a man of god and now that when that i said what happened i went for a retreat immediately i said lord what happened that my eyes did not see this did i sin against you have my backsliding what happened that under my watch this kind of thing will happen I remember going to pray and I cried, I prayed, I said, God, what is this? Why would this lady just go like that? And then I learned that the strength, I still had to go and preach and do everything I had to do. How many preachers have had to preach and while they were on stage, someone just sent a text. Your father just died, your mother just died, but because there was capacity, they would not punish God's people because of their personal pain. They will square up. Do you know the kind? Let me use a man of God as a bias. Do you know the kinds of news that the average man of God hears? You, your mental health will go down if you don't have spiritual capacity. The issues you will manage will create a bias that will cause you to hurt others because of the kinds of things you would have heard. If you need strength, capacity. By the time they tell you 10 people have died and you are the ones in one day everybody is contacting you to you and you will not be able to do what you have to do again everybody say capacity
Number two, what do you do with your seasons of grace, your seven years of plenty? Build strategic relationships. Please write it down. Build strategic relationships. My apologies, I'm working with time. But let me give you a very interesting scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Can I tell you, please start this statement if you are writing. In all you're getting, if the only thing you have is money and you do not have relationships, your life, life will pierce you in a way that will make you feel you're a failure. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor uh-huh for if they fall one will help up his fellow but woe to him that is alone if he has not fallen he will not know the tragedy of being alone but he says when he falleth for he had not another to help him up again if two lie together they have heat but how can one be warm alone and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Can I tell you? You are as stable as the relationships that you have in life. With all due respect, let me speak to every young person here. This is the wisdom we must learn from our parents. Some of them may not have had all the money, but they mastered the art of building strategic relationships build relationships in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters it does it does there are people who have gotten jobs today and opportunities not necessarily because they were competent enough as it were but they were beneficiaries of the benevolence of others relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things you can use it to buy things let me repeat it relationships is their currencies is one of the true riches of the kingdom is the capital that buys money relationships humorously pastor ben was talking about me coming the second time and i was telling him that you know here and there you could find someone who said are possible we've been trying but that's the power of relationships there are people who enjoy certain privileges and while you are angry saying it's unfair, they maximize their seasons. You may have heard me say it in my teaching. Politicians and unbelievers know this. It's only believers that don't understand this. You will see a politician traveling for the birthday celebration of a, a wealthy man's two-year-old child. Now, for God's sake, he went to school. What is that person doing in that gathering? A two-year-old child running around being around and yet you see very responsible and busy people busy people and yet they are smiling there you think it's a child is god giving us wisdom say in the name of jesus i receive grace to discern and invest in strategic relationships yes sir Yes, sir. Someone you may be seeing in the prison today is only two days left to be the prime minister. And your ability to honor and invest, this is the reason why if you do not practice the law of honor, your life will be hard. Learn to honor and respect people without verifying who they are. Make it a practice. Don't just honor great people. You have seen their greatness. But the one who is imagined who you cannot see, are we together now? No matter how high God lifts you, learn to honor people. Honor elders, honor your contemporaries, honor your subordinates. Don't create preferential treatments and you are bowing down to those who are great and insulting those below you. They are climbing. Hallelujah. You can literally earn a living investing in relationships like you do stocks and they say what is your stream of income and you say relationships you believe what i'm saying so use your moments of grace to invest in relationships there are people who have invested in my life they invested in my life they made contributions however small Moments where nobody knew me, I have vowed that on, for as long as I'm alive, they will never beg for bread. 
now that God has helped me. You will see those people lifted and smiling. Seasons where they are supposed to cry, they are still smiling. Because they took out time and practiced the foolishness of investing in destinies. I was at the office while I watched um, I watched a presentation that happened before our coming here. And I was so touched. And Pastor Ben was graciously giving me the explanation that there were all kinds of, um, you know, something was uh, being put together to encourage people to strive in their businesses. And I said, my goodness. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? There are people today, the person whose bag you held, that is the weight of your child's school fees you just handed over. Because the person will come and say, you know what, I have the best school in Lagos. I remember you. You will think I've forgotten, but I remember you. You have five children. All of them should come to the school and under my watch they will not pay one naira or one dollar regardless of school fees so you see people rise in lagos and you think they pay for everything there are many things people are enjoying today it was paid for by relationships i pray that you start making your relational investments that right from this conference there are many ways to invest number one gratitude Gratitude is the number one way to invest in relationships. Gratitude. Be thoughtful enough to let people know that their contribution in your life is not taken for granted. Train yourself to be grateful. Says on Sunday, may God honor you. And she says, wow, nobody has ever told me thank you. Say no problem. Just serve with all your heart. Somebody will call and say, I need two people to give them a job in NMPC. Um... Can you recommend someone and you are the first person? You see how people program favor? Versus clean my chair quickly and let me sit down. And then they say, who should we remove from this place of work? And your mind comes. That's how many people blame Satan for things that came because of the bankruptcy of thoughtfulness. Say thank you. One more time, say thank you. Start with Jesus, but don't just end with him. Say thank you to every person who contributes to your growth at any point in time. Don't wait till you arrive. Say thank you as you move. You lubricate your path to an excelling life when you learn to say thank you. Someone by this conference, find five strategic people in your life. I'm giving you as an assignment in righteousness. Five strategic people who have contributed significantly, significantly in your life. Don't just say thanks. Apostle said I should say thank you. Thank you for what you did that day. You, you will attract anger instead. Are you ready? Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. Selflessly invest. Use your moments of opportunity to selflessly invest and transform as many lives as you can. Oh boy, I wish we had time. Selflessly invest in transforming and in blessing and transforming as many lives please look up the bible says give a portion to seven and ye to eight for you do not know which will work are we together now do you know what that means make every human being not from a selfish standpoint but that every human being has the potential to be a destiny atm for you except that you don't know which is which so that you should be lavish as you help people selflessly so because not everybody will ignore your contribution some person will rise today can i tell you with all due respect and you know that what i'm saying is true there are elderly people today who are being taken care of not by their biological children many people call them daddy and they mean it because they were daddy indeed for many people job said i was eyes to the blind hallelujah living a meaningful life oh you are earning two hundred thousand now five hundred thousand now and you see a young boy and you say you know what i don't have all the money but let me contribute ten thousand to your schooling 
that may be little but that child will remember you for that ten thousand and may god help him rise and get established that ten thousand can mean a house for you in old age that ten thousand can mean some kind of health advantage for you invest in people don't wait till you arrive you can start right where you are december is coming rather than waiting in anger for people to bring you your own part of the Christmas gift, why don't you think for the first time? In America, leave the bills to me. Let it be my thank you gift for you. The dream of Joseph is a warning. Uncertain times will come and they are now before us. There are people who are gliding through these painful seasons as if they do not exist. They are reaping from their wisdom of yesterday. They did not just build capacity. Are we together now? Yeah. They did not just build relationships, but they went so far to be a blessing. Only God knows what these precious people who will be recipients of this blessing, only God knows what they will become tomorrow. Some of them in the nearest future, when there is a project by January, they will come and meet Pastor Ben and say, how much is the annual bill of the King's Court? Let me know. And they will sign it like a recharge card. Say amen. Yes, sir. Many years ago, there was a gentleman. I went to preach in a campus. And I made an altar call, and he happened to be part of those who came out. He got born again. A few years later, he would become the, what we call FCS, the FCS president. And then many years down the line, this gentleman, God started helping him. He now became the owner of a real estate company doing very well and then one time after service i'm seeing people and here comes this gentleman looking at me and he says sir do you remember me i said i have no idea and he says i got saved in your meeting i later became a leader and today god has helped me this is something little i brought to say thank you say favor but favor does not just happen like that it is programmed are we together someone you are helping today it may not mean much to you but it means so much to someone i made up my mind that for as long as i'm alive someone must eat because i'm alive someone must smile because i'm alive i'm not called to save the seeds of the world i'm not called to do everything to everybody but as far as it depends on me there will be no excuses i will do my best and my best I will continue to do as an individual and as a man of God to do my best to stretch my hands and out of that which God has brought to see to it that at least I can make one person smile at least let one person's child be able to go to school giving is truly living when you contribute to the joy of someone hallelujah apostle but I don't have money get up one day and go and wash your pastor's car, knock his door, and say, Sir, I'm a young man who is going, I've listened to these messages, can you give me the honor? Let me just wash your car. Not that I'm looking for anything. I just want to honor you, sir. This is, I have healthy hands. I may not have a job. I may not put fuel in the car, but I can wash the car. And while you are washing it, you are saying, Lord, I'm doing this because I love you. I'm doing this because I'm, a, I'm an imagined responsible man. And heaven is looking at you. You have passed your exam for the next season. Versus an arrogant person who sits down and believes that magically life will just happen. No, sir. You may have heard my story years ago when I used to carry my own keyboard. After returning from my church, I would carry my own keyboard. I was playing the keyboard for someone who just started a ministry, just a young ministry in a hotel. My own keyboard by myself. I would carry it, go and set it up, play it, and after service, I would carry it and walk like a madman back home. I never had thank you once. The only thing I ever got was one bottle of Fanta and a cassette during when he was launching his, his, uh, his, his album. So this, this talk of nobody is seeing me, take away that thing and settle down and know you are making use of your time. Little did I know that God had a great destiny for that young boy. 
he who is faithful in little. Is someone learning? Oh, you don't have all the money to bless, but find somebody you honor. Go and sweep their compound. I'm doing this because I love you and I love Jesus. And the person may look at you at the end of it to say, come and kneel down here. Father, everything I could not do in my life, let this child do it. And that's the end of it. A new season can open literally at that moment. I wish I were lying and I would have just told you I came to play. But I mean every word that you are hearing me say. You can see of impact. Use your time of convenience. Don't worry, I'm coming back with what I said. Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance, maintained consistency through all seasons. Study. And when God grants you the grace, follow. There is something they know. There is something they are practicing. And the Bible says to follow them with faith and patience. Can I tell you, in our world today, there are people who once were great, but now are objects of shame and mockery. There are those who went from grass to grace. And there are those who have remained transgenerationally relevant. Use your moments of convenience to study them. What did God place on this man of God that has kept him for 50 years? What did God place on this businessman that he started doing business where the in thing was a typewriter and now with all the navigation through technology is still relevant? Don't disrespect people's consistency. Consistency is proof of mastery. You don't get your way too long. Over the flow, and I will be still know you are God. I will be still and know you. There are people who have documented their pain unashamedly. They did not hide their scars. They deposited it in books, in materials for a generation to be able to learn. They opened up about their mistakes and their foolishness. It is a privilege to have access to the wound of many so that you will not have that injury again. There are parents who, if they can find humble young men, will pour into them and tell them, I made mistakes. This mistake made me to pay a price of 10 years. When you get to this place, jump. It doesn't look like there is a hole there. But while they are clapping for you, be looking at the hole that is there. And you can, you can literally redeem 10 years of foolishness in 5 minutes. A man's pain and a man's car. Can I tell you, do not disrespect consistency when you see it. Consistency in ministry. Consistency in business. A woman who has never gone to school but has raised 12 children and the least of them is a champion working in a multinational. Don't you tell me that was a mistake. There is something she has to tell you. She may say it in Yoruba, but listen. She may say it in Igbo, but listen. She may say it in a crude, unrefined way to such an intelligent person as you. Humble yourself. Adaptation is proof of honor. Bend over backwards to listen to ancient wisdom that positions you for a great life. Is someone learning? When I have the honor of standing before our fathers of faith, I have the honor of standing before people who have produced consistent results. I don't stand before them as a man of God. My ears are ever open to learn. What can I learn in five minutes? If ever I am given an opportunity to ask them questions, I don't ask foolish questions. I ask questions that relate to their scars. If the young you has an opportunity to converse with the old you, what would the discussion be? What would the old you advise the young person not to do or to do? It's often said that the aged have experience, but they do not have time to correct themselves. The young people have time, but they do not have experience to make quality decisions. When you follow wise people, you can bring wisdom to your time and program seasons of joy and seasons of pain. Can you let me five more minutes? I have to wrap up by telling you what to do when you find yourself in a season of pain, of tragedy. Because many of us right now, whilst you heard me say everything I was saying, you were just waiting for me to get here. 
Apostle, talk to me. What do I do? I've lost a loved one, lost a job, five children, three children, two children. I do not even know where the next meal will come from. This is why God brought you here. Things do not seem to be working in my life. I thought it was an attack. I have prayed and fasted. You may be saved. Nothing has happened. Do you have a word for me? Yes, I do. Let me the next five minutes and let me speak to you by the Spirit. What do you do when sudden unfavorable seasons appear? Like they have for many people now. And sadly like they make for many people. What do you do as a victorious believer when sudden unfavorable seasons appear? I will tell you. Number one, Habakkuk 3, give us 17 to 19. Media, please help us. Habakkuk chapter 3. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Believers, listen. Does this look like it was? James 1, 2 and 4. What does it say? My brethren, it says, count it all joy. Count it what? Stop counting it as a loss. Count it all joy. Stop counting it as a disappointment. The name you give the situation is what it becomes for you. Count it all joy. When ye fall into diverse temptations, next verse, knowing this, there is an information that gives you that confidence. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect. The word perfect here means entire, balanced, wanting nothing. The first thing to do when negative seasons appear is to learn to protect your joy. Protect your joy like a jewelry that you do not want missing. Protect your joy like an investment you do not want to fail. Your joy is beyond happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. The delight you get in the presence of results is called happiness. But ladies and gentlemen, when you lose any other thing, lose the job but not the joy. Let your loved one go but not the joy. Hold on to your joy in the midst of your tears. Lord, I may not understand what I'm going through. January till now, I'm speaking to someone. I know you are watching. I know you are well dressed. But the truth is that there are people here right now. They almost don't want to leave church because they don't want to face the reality of the mountains that are before them. A court case where your reputation is about to be shredded into pieces. And sometimes you do not have the opportunity to advocate your righteousness. Yes, sir. These moments happen to believers. Once upon a time, that young Nazarene, accused of all kinds of things, is now hanging upon the cross. A 33 year old man, the one who raised the dead, multiplied bread, and people looked at him and said, Could you not save yourself? By what power did you use to raise the dead, feed people in crusades that an ordinary nail is what is holding you? They did not know that a season was about to change. And with that change in season will come many sons into glory. Can I tell you? There are many times you may cry, but you must learn to discern what is happening to seasons. Someone is coming to the end of your seven years of pain. It's been quite a long one. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Thus saith the Lord, He said, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Verse 2, He says, When you come through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. He says, Then it uses a very interesting term. He says, When you walk through fire, you don't run through fire. You walk through it because in the midst of that fire, there is a purification that is happening. That fire will strip you of your ego, strip you of flesh, dependence on yourself, 
why you should believe that it was only your certificate that would give you. Now you are learning. You are having a first class result on your table and it looks like what is before you does not match your sacrifice. And now, now you understand that the race is not to the swift and that the battle is not to strong nor bread for them that are wisdom. That it is the Lord that truly shows mercy. You will now know why people come to give thanksgiving in church and in spite of their pedigree, they kneel down and roll before God. Until you pass through fire, that does not make sense. There is an education that only pain can bring. Pain is a lesson. I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true I lift my hands to honor you Because your word I leave my hands to honor you Because your word is true I leave my hands to honor you Because your word is true I will sing We'll continue tomorrow morning By the spirit of the living God There is one more thing I want to show you But for now Rest in the fact that every time you cannot explain what is happening to you, you may cry, but preserve your joy. When Job went through everything he went through in his life, there are actually three points I just gave you one. Number two is to learn to keep your praise. The Bible says at the end of that news, Job bowed himself and he worshipped. How do you worship in the midst of tragedy? Then number three, call upon the God of your salvation. That is the third way to deal with negative seasons. He says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. So shall I be saved from my enemies. James chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16, he says, If any man, is any man afflicted, he said, let him pray. So number one, protect your joy. Number two, Switch to a mode of praise and worship, even when it does not make sense. Turn your pain to praise. Truly turn it to praise. And then number three, call upon the Lord in prayer. Let me wrap up with Psalm 46, 1 and 2. Please can we stand? Psalm 46, 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength. Your Bible calls him a very present help in trouble verse 2 therefore even in the midst of challenging situations we will not fear though the earth be removed look at me please has this happened already no sir no it's not that bad the earth is still in place that even if the earth is removed we will not fear and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea our confidence is that God is alive. When all else fail, He still remains God. My message for you is that there will always be the seasons of plenty and the seasons of constraint. But the good news is you can remain victorious through all seasons. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you because you have challenged someone tonight Thank you for opening our eyes to see how to thrive and to excel victorious, even through uncertain times. I'm praying tonight, oh God, that this word will indeed bear fruit in the life of someone. In the name of Jesus. And for someone who is already coming to the end of your season of pain, I stand as a prophetic midwife and I push you in fine acceleration into your new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be for you, like the Bible says, you have turned my morning into death. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.